Hey everybody, Joe from Great Bench Electronics here. Welcome back to the bench. So today I'm gonna make a video that has been frequently requested, which is going over the hand tools that I use to make guitar pedals and tube amps and electronics and whatnot. Some of these tools are hand-me-downs from my dad who got me into electronics. Some of them are suggestions from his work doing his electronics. Some of them are tools that I've picked out specifically for guitar pedal making. With tools, there is a there's definitely diminishing returns in terms of value. So if I talk about a price and it sounds kind of high, chances are there's a cheaper tool that does the same job and will get you like 95% of the way there. The flip side of that, of course, is the old rule, which is that you buy the best tools you can afford. I tend to go that route knowing that I'm gonna use them more or less every day and that it's generally just a more pleasurable experience to use nice tools. That being said, if you're getting started building pedals, don't feel like you need to drop hundreds of dollars on tools. It's really not necessary. You can always add on nicer tools as you continue building. So let's get started with one of the most important tools, if not the most important tool, the soldering iron. Soldering iron's job is to heat up solder and your workpiece so that they flow together. A good soldering iron can absolutely be the difference between a very pleasurable and rewarding experience building a guitar pedal and a frustrating and ultimately defeating experience. So if there's one place I think you should not skimp on tools, it is your soldering iron. To that effect, my absolute favorite soldering iron that I will love and cherish and use till the end of time, as long as I can get my hands on them, is the Mechal SP200. I love this iron. Uh, it's an incredible iron. The piece here, this is actually the power supply, uh, and that gets paired with the wand and a tip for the wand. These are removable and replaceable. This soldering iron, or this um, power supply, I believe I've had since like 2014-ish. They are absolutely bomb-proof, it's hard. Uh, I assume like forged aluminum here, housing. You'll notice that there's no controls on this whatsoever, and that's because this uses the Metcal Smart Heat technology. Uh, it essentially uses, a, I don't know the exact terminology, I think it's like the Curie effect, or whatever. It, essentially, it senses the heat necessary to flow the solder and automatically heats up to that temperature. It works brilliantly. This is an amazing soldering iron. I just looked on eBay right now. Uh, it looks like you can get a wand, a power supply. I think that usually the power supplies are used, but the wand uh, and the cradle here you can usually get a set of these for around 200 bucks. The tips are usually 50 to 60 bucks and you can still make these. If you're unsure which tips, first off, it should have it should have the end that looks like this where there's a flattened edge on the bottom there with the two pins. The part number, I believe all the ones that work for this iron start with SSC like that. This is 636A. This is sort of a wide, it's about an eighth of an inch wide there chisel. This is a SSC 638A, and that's sort of a smaller one, and I use the in-between one, which is SSC 737A. This is the tip I use almost all the time. There absolutely are cheaper irons out there from Weller, um, which can work fine. Like I said, you'll get 90 to 95% of the performance out of a cheaper tool, but this tool will probably last you for your entire building career. Like I said, I, I've used this hard over, oh, I don't know, coming up on 10 years now. It has worked exactly the same every day since the day I got it. And I, I bought it used, by the way. This is a used iron when I got it. And still 10 years later, it is absolutely chugging along like a tank. So do I recommend these? 100% I recommend these to everybody. 200 bucks and you will have an iron that will last effectively forever. Not really, of course, but these are awesome. And yeah, there's no controls. You turn it on and that's it. It just, it senses the temperature automatically. There's no temperature control. There's no readouts, nothing. It heats up in like 10, 15 seconds. It's amazing. I don't think Metcal makes the SP200 anymore. So you definitely will be looking for used ones on eBay. Uh, I think the Metcal, I don't I, I don't know the exact details. Metcal also sells under the OKI, Oki International brand. They make smaller irons that have the same smart heat technology. I've used one of those. It seemed to work fine. I just am partial to these because it's just what I've always used. So yeah, SP200. All right, so moving on to wrenches and cutting tools and pliers and whatnot. This is probably what I would consider like the bare minimum for building guitar pedals. So you need some sort of grabbing tool. I use needle nose pliers like this. These are uh, Exolite brand, X-C-E-L-I-T-E, -E, uh, which is by Weller. I think I just grabbed these off Amazon. They work fine. They're spring loaded. The tips more or less come together. I've used the crap out of these, so these work fine. Just something small enough that you can get into small areas. You don't want something too bulky. If you go and get needleless pliers from like a hardware store, you're probably gonna end up with something like this. These can absolutely be useful, but they're not great for electronics work because they're just too big and unwieldy. So 
something small and more agile like these are awesome. Cutting tools, there are a whole bunch of different style cutters. These are called oval head cutters. Uh, diagonal cutters are sort of the big brother to this. That's like these guys here. You'll notice there's different types in terms of the cutting edges. These cutters, I recommend these, these are called flush cutters and there's different versions like semi-flush and full flush. These are, I think, semi-flush or like mostly full flush, but essentially just like how the edge is cut. The, the diagonal cutters here, there's like a, there's a triangle for the cutting teeth. So you have one triangle coming in like this and one coming in like that. This is better for um, harder metals, bigger gauge, wire, whatnot. This is for more fine, specific electronic work. These are also designed only for soft metals, so like copper, tin, maybe aluminum. I would have to double check, uh, but you wouldn't want to cut steel or any type of hard metal because it will just mar up and ruin the edge of the cutters. These ones are made by Nipex. The part number is there, 7722115. These have been working great. I usually use these ones here from Technotool, but I broke the spring and I haven't been able to find a replacement spring anywhere. These ones work great too. These were super sharp. These cutters are kind of expensive. The Nipex stuff is always expensive. The Technotool ones are expensive too. Lindstrom is another brand that makes really nice, kind of expensive cutters. Again, just, just look for basic cutters on Amazon. They don't have to be anything fancy. And maybe someday you could upgrade to one of these that'll just last a little bit longer. The edge will be a little bit sharper, a little bit more durable. These are wire strippers. I prefer these strippers where they have the set gauge wire sizes for stripping. I've never had good luck with the automatic strippers. I know a lot of people swear by them. That's cool. There's also wire strippers where it's just a single cutter and they, you just sort of size it by how far you squeeze the levers together. Those I've used and they're, they're okay. These are just faster because you don't have to think about it. You just pick your wire size, clamp down all the way and then strip. This, is, this one goes from 22 gauge up to 30 gauge. And this one goes from 20 gauge to 10 gauge. So I have both of these and I can do anywhere from 10 gauge all the way to 30. You need some type of cutting tool. This can be anything from taking off packaging to cutting labels, cutting out paper for like stencils or, or layouts for drilling templates. Uh, this is just a standard X-Acto blade, uses number 11 X-Acto knives. You could also add in a more like utility blade style. This is one of the Ulfa knives made in Japan. I use both of those constantly. For screwdrivers, uh, I think it's good to have a larger screwdriver with larger bits. This is good for like taking the enclosures apart, any large, um, any larger fasteners. And then a smaller, more precision screwdriver here. This one I use a lot for knobs, like for the set screw on knobs. Uh, this one's just a Cobalt brand, which is the Lowe's hardware store, store brand, works fine. This one is a Klein tool. I actually got this recently, I really like it. Uh, this is their 14 in one adjustable tool. It has a little collar here that lets you extend the tool shaft. It's magnetic and it has the extra bits here stuffed in the handle. And I like this because it reminds me of the, uh, the Jurassic Park DNA sample holder, the Barbasol, fake Barbasol um, spray shaving cream bottle that they use in the movie. It just reminds me of that and that makes me laugh and I enjoy that. Uh, so yeah, this is, this is a great tool, but any really any screwdriver with standard like PH2 size Phillips heads, flax heads will work great and you'll use them all the time. And then some sort of adjustable wrench. This is just a standard vice grip. This is a six inch adjustable wrench. Be careful with adjustable wrenches because you can move the jaws back and forth being adjustable. If you don't get it really sized down to what you're doing, you can round over nuts. Adjustable wrenches aren't great for everything, uh, but if you're just gonna have one wrench, it should probably be adjustable so you can tackle a whole bunch of different size nuts. So this falls in the category of stuff that I wouldn't want to go without. Moving up to the tools that are more just like nice to have, it can be very useful to have a nice set of calibers. These are V's calibers or VIS calibers, V-I-S, made in Poland. I actually got these when I worked at the bike shop and this is both in Imperial with inches at the bottom and metric at the top. Very useful for sizing different holes. If you want to get real exact with your drill holes, you can use metric versus Imperial bits and make your um, potentiometers and switches fit really nice. I use this tool all the time. This can also really be useful for if you're moving drill templates over, you're trying to fit, uh, like if you're rehousing a pedal to try and guess the distances between knobs to, to uh, install into a new enclosure. A set of calipers like this can be really useful. This would be sort of like analog calipers. And then you can also get fancy and get yourself a set of digital calipers. These are a new purchase for me. I picked these up at the yard sale for a whopping $5. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, these are Mar digital calipers from Germany and these work great too. Either one of those work great. This is an inspection light. I think I picked this up from tubedepot.com, but it's really just any standard inspection light. 
But yeah, I use this all the time for being able to read part numbers uh, in order to replace with the correct part or get an idea of what people are using. You've seen me use this definitely on the channel to read like ICs and uh, different transistor part numbers and whatnot. This is an automatic center punch. It's a spring-loaded hardened steel tool. You press it down and it will uh, bounce this little piece up and down really fast and it will put a divot into whatever you are going to be drilling. The point of this is to put a little, a little dimple into your enclosure so that when you come in with a drill bit, it doesn't want to walk around. It'll hopefully just sit right in that little divot and drill straight down, ideally. This is the General Tool number 89, just picked up at the hardware store. These will wear out, especially if you are stupid like me and try to use this on a hardened steel bolt. You will wreck the tip really fast. So use this only for aluminum or softer metal or standard non-hardened steel so that you don't wreck your tool. This is a deburring tool, the Glober B by Shaviv, S-H-A-V-I-V. -I, I think I picked this up also from Tube Depot. It basically just has a little shaped cutting tool there and you can put this inside a larger drilled hole through an enclosure and use this to take off the burr that's left over from the drilling process. I use these all the time as long as the hole is big enough to get in, it makes it really easy. You can also get in there with just like a hand file or like emery cloth, something like that, but this makes it quick. This is another holdover from the bike shop. This is a Pedro's tire lever, best tire lever out there, by the way, for fixing flats, but also works great for removing really stubborn knobs. I had to shave down the lever lip a little bit here to actually fit under certain knobs. But what you can do is if you have a, uh, if you have a pedal that has knobs that don't wanna come off, you can sort of work this under here. And what I do is I lightly push up and spin the knob so that it tries to bring the knob up in a nice consistent way. Make sure, of course, if you have a set screw to undo that first. It works great for any set screw ones or if it's a um, one of the knurled knobs as well. These work great, so that's tire lever. And they're made of plastic, so they shouldn't mar your finish. This little guy hiding down here, this is a solder sucker. Uh, desoldering tools are, I've had, mixed results with most of them. Uh, this is the SSO2 Engineer Solder Sucker. They come with replaceable little like silicone rubber tips here. Uh, it has a nice, it's a nice like aluminum body and you can press it and it sucks solder. These work decently well. The other solder suckers also work well. This one's kind of expensive. The cheaper ones work okay too, meaning they all kind of work like shit, uh, but, but they can work sometimes. And so if you have to desolder something, you gotta get the solder out of there somehow. And so, a solder sucker is a good thing to have. You can also use solder wick. This is, I don't have my other set of solder wick. I must have, oh, here it is. I must have just finished up my previous roll of solder wick. So I had ready a new roll. Uh, this is the number four Kenwick rosin solder, uh, solder braid, and this will help you suck away solder from a solder joint. It's worth pointing out that this stuff is not ideally used on PCBs because the rosin left over has acid in it which that can eat away at the copper. And so you wanna go for PCBs with the no clean Chemtronics stuff. This is the, uh, there's the part number, 770-424-4888, I believe. That's probably this smaller container. I don't use this much uh, because it's more expensive and I, I don't always desolder from PCBs, but when I do, I use this. And then for everything else, I use this, the standard 10-50L Chemway. Another interesting set of tools. These are the rocket sockets from, ooh, I can't remember their name, sorry. Uh, but the, yeah, the rocket socket here and the little uh, Pepper's Petals, that's right. Rocket sockets made by Pepper's Petals. I believe I got both of these from lovemyswitches.com. And they're basically just little plastic finger wrenches uh, that don't mess up finishes. And they usually are good enough to take off the nuts and whatnot from guitar pedals. If it's really stubborn, then you can go over using an adjustable wrench or a socket set like so if, it, if it's really stubborn. But usually these little plastic finger wrenches are good enough. The lower piece here that actually holds all the sockets together called hold a socket is they don't come with it, but it's a useful tool to keep them all organized and I can immediately grab the one that I want. The little adjustment pepper pedals here, I've talked about this before, this is the better setter and essentially just lets you set a knob to the specific position that's correct. Uh, so it has little white marks here that show the range of the standard like alpha 16 mil potentiometer. You line it up there, line up your pot, and then you spin it around and both sides should line up on either side. Pretty neat, maybe a little bit of overkill, but if you have a certain like OCD tendency like I do, then it can be even necessary sometimes. 
Solder I wouldn't necessarily consider a tool, but since we're here, I figure I'll just tell you what solder I use. This is Kester. Uh, it is 63% uh, tin and 37% lead. It, this is the no clean solder, solder core. It has the solder, or the, excuse me, the rosin core. It's a, literally, a, a, the core is made of rosin. And the part number is this one, 24-6337-8800. That's the stuff I use. It's the 0.8 millimeter, so a little bit smaller, not quite one millimeter. 0.031 inch 31 thousandths. They come on one pound rolls like this. I have, I think I found an eBay listing for like 10 of these rolls and I've just been working through it over the years. You don't use it that much. Uh, oh, and by the way, if you see expiration dates on solder, they're pretty much BS. So if you see some that are like expired, it's probably fine to use. I should show off some holding tools. I, this might actually be included in like the mandatory tool list, but something to hold PCBs. I really like this stuff. This is just your standard poster tack. Um, some people call it like blue tack. It's essentially just this kind of sticky putty that you can use just to hold PCBs. And the cool stuff about this is it holds it just strong enough to let you solder when you need to solder. You can also put the PCB upside down and it'll push up on the components to make sure they're sitting nice and flush on the board. This stuff works great. It will sort of melt under heat, but if you just take the, turn the PCB over and dab, the component that was heating up the putty here, it'll pull it right off. So yeah, this is poster tack and it works great. You can find them in any like staples or whatever, um, like crafts or uh, stationary store. Other tools for holding can include a hobby vise. This is a standard uh, power tech that I'm pretty sure I just got off of Amazon. I forget the the main, they're called hobby vices. Sometimes vacu vice, oh, it may be vacu vice is the brand, I don't remember. But um, yeah, any of these smaller hobby vices are very useful uh, when you need a little more gripping power or something is a regular shape, the rubber pads on these can be really useful to grip down on that piece. It has an articulating ball head joint piece here that can be useful. You can also pull off the rubber and then it has slots in here where a PCB could sit, like a standard 1.6 mil or two mil PCB can fit in there. That's a hobby vice. And then I do have a design for PCB holder here. This uh, has little jaws here that will fit around a PCB. You can shrink it in or out for different size PCBs. The both jaws I think are capable. No, this one is a fixed jaw. You can just spin it. This one has a little spring loaded catch. These work great, but they're obviously just for PCBs. So if you're trying to mess around with like cleaning up components or whatnot, this will not help you at all. One tool that I don't have that's very popular is called a third hand tool or like a extra like electronics hands tools, essentially little alligator clips on these little gooseneck arms. I've seen a lot of people use those. I've never had a pair of those. I've never felt like I needed a set of those. If you go check them out, maybe they look like something you would want to use. They're not for me, but to each their own. People have asked me about this tool. This is called a spudger. This one is specifically the Bowtech SH80. I think these are like stupid expensive, like 10 or $15. I hope I didn't pay that much when I bought it, uh, but you do not need to spend that kind of money. It doesn't have to be this weird, like fiberglass, plastic, whatever stuff. Just get standard like plastic ones off Amazon or whatever. Uh, but spudgers are super useful. I mostly use these as pointing tools, but they are useful uh, and they're non-conductive and they hold up reasonably well to heat. So yeah, that's a spudger. A little bottle of alcohol, isopropyl alcohol dispenser. This one is neat because you sort of push down and it fills this reservoir on top and then you can do whatever you need to do. You can come in here with a rag and soak it up and use that for wiping or you can use a little uh, like Q-tip thing here to clean up whatever you're trying to clean. Makes it just really easy and then pop the lid back down and that's it. Multimeter, multimeters are super useful. This is the Fluke 179. It's a true RMS meter. So uh, it will measure your, if you're doing AC signals, it will give you the RMS AC voltage as opposed to your actual or peak to peak voltage. You don't need to get a Fluke meter. Fluke meters are expensive because they have to go through a whole bunch of like rigorous licensing and testing. You can just get a standard multimeter off Amazon, totally fine. I don't know how much, how the expensive these are. This was a gift. Pretty much I'm telling you, don't buy a fluke meter. They're overpriced. Just get a standard. As long as it has AC voltage, DC voltage, ohms, uh, and a continuity tester, a beeper. Current is also useful. Don't use it that much though, but yeah. AC voltage, DC voltage, ohm meter, and continuity tester, and capacitor, diode checkers already too, uh, then that's good to go. And I suppose last but not least, I will show off maybe my newest tool acquisition that is almost definitely overkill, uh, but it has changed completely my methods for desoldering, and that is a desoldering gun. Uh, this is a vacuum powered desoldering gun. The, the, the part number is uh, FR301, and it's a game changer. It, uh, it makes desoldering super easy, and I can't believe I spent so many toilsome hours trying to desolder stuff without one of these. I would pretty much use this for anything on a PCB now. It is good to get some extra tips. I have like a, 
a large tip and a small tip and a medium tip stays on the soldering or the desoldering gun. It does give you tools for cleanup over here, little uh, cleaning rods and whatnot that's important to do after you finish desoldering. The little vacuum chamber here is, I forget how you do this, it's been a minute. Yeah, you just lock that back, you take this out, dump out the solder, it's got a little filter, you drop it back in and press the button, it cinches back down and you're good to go. A little changing tool helps you change out the tips. This comes over here, you just loosen it up and you can pull that out, tighten it back down. Yeah, desoldering tool, this is big time overkill. Um, like, and we, like we saw, there's other options. There's the desoldering little solder suckers and there's desolder braid. This is really like if you're doing desoldering on the regular, maybe it's worth it. So yeah, these are the tools that I use all the time for building tar pedals. If you wanna see exactly how I use them, just look back through the videos. I use exactly these tools. Uh, none of this stuff are sponsored. None of these tools were provided to me. Actually, that's not true. The, um, uh, ooh, I forget, someone sent me pedal parts uh, or stompboxparts.com did send me the, the socket holder here for doing that video. Uh, but otherwise, all these tools have been purchased by me or have been a gift and I use them all the time. I love them. Uh, if any of these tools uh, crap to bed, I would just replace them with something very similar. I would love to hear from you if you have difference of opinions in tools you like to use or what are your favorite tools. I would love to hear about it. Let me know in the comments or if you have recommendations for cheaper tools out there for someone getting started, I'd love to hear about that too. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. I'm Joe from Great Bench Electronics. Thank you for watching.